Hello and welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And on this podcast, we address the truth about sex, intimacy, and lifelong love. And you guys, we are continuing in our series about the seasons of marriage. And today we're talking about that season of raising teenagers and how to keep your marriage strong through it. And we have some very, very special guests and dear friends of ours in studio with us today. And it's gonna be a real treat for you, right, sweetie? Yes, two of my favorite people are here with us, Eric and Keisha Gomez. They are, they've, they've launched a couple already. They still got one that's getting ready to launch. They have got so much wisdom to teach us about lots of things, but in particular today about this season of marriage and parenting. Stick around, you're gonna love it. Let's dive in. Well, like we said in the intro, we are super excited about our guests today. Eric and Keisha Gomez are dear friends of ours. Eric's also the COO here at XO Marriage. I always put an L at the end because you are COOL. That's my dad joke. Of so <laughs> we're good. full of cheesy jokes yeah, over here. You guys it. know it. <laughs> you guys are awesome, and we love calling you friends. And we're excited about this conversation. And just to, as a refresher for those listening, we're in seasons of marriage, and we're talking about all the different seasons and how every season of marriage has unique challenges and unique opportunities, unique blessings. And we're doing one episode, we're just actually me talk, and then we're inviting an expert to join us who's in the trenches. And so today's, we, we've got particular interest in, because it's do. when you're raising teenagers, we've got a couple teenagers, couple younger, you guys have a lot of experience in this. You've got one that's now in college, uh, one that's going to be going to college soon. And so you're, you're kind of preparing for that empty nest and, and you're dealing with the uh, adult children or children who are becoming adults. And there's a lot, a lot that goes on with that. So it's stressful. It's fun. It's exciting. We just want to pick your brain. So thank you for being here. Yes, of course. Absolutely. We're excited to be here. Honored to be here. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your family dynamic and kind of, I know Dave just said like where you are, but you have two kids pretty close in age. Mm -hmm. And just tell us more about that. So we have three kids. Or three kids. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Two so we teenagers. Have, we kids. have two teenagers. Yes. And then we have a 25 year old right. who's already married. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so um, we have a family of four mm -hmm. dynamic. Uh, and our 19 year old, who's at ACU, Albany Christian, uh, go cats. Uh, and yes. then um, <laughs> we also have a 17 year old. And so she's a senior. Yes. And so that's where we sit now. Mm -hmm. And so we're still trying to figure it out. I don't know about experts. When you said experts, that, that threw well, me. I was like, I don't you know. You guys are about to be. Experienced. You are yes. experienced. You're yeah. seasoned. You, you know. don't look old enough no, you, well, to you have had kids young. that experience. You yes. Yes. Started, yeah. yes, we started. Yeah. Which I think is really cool because now you're going to be young and be empty nesters. Yes. You yes. Know? We can't say that about ourselves because we're, we're. I wish we had started young. We, well, we did have two kids young. Then we had a breather. Then we had a long break. And then we had so more I'll be, kids. I'll so. be on a walker by the time no, we're empty well, nesters. But not going to be that old. No, it, it's, they on the older wouldn't change a thing. They're awesome. <laughs> but what are you guys learning in this season? Yeah. Mm. Sorry to cut yeah. you off, sweetie. No, was, you go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I just would love to hear like what, what you're learning in this season. And maybe what did you do different like now with your youngest as opposed to when your first one was, the 25-year-old was going through. Like yeah. what do you wish you could have gone back and told yourself when you were starting this season of, of having teenagers, what would you have done differently? And what would that, you have done the same? A, that, yeah, I think that's a bit, I mean, how long is this show? <laughs> uh, I, I think for us, you know, one thing would be, um, I, I think when I was younger, I would have told myself to be more patient. Mm. Um, in my 20s, I, I didn't think of myself as a, a patient man. Um, I, I was just trying to, I don't know. Meet. I, uh, I've heard people talk about in your twenties. You're trying to find your your niche. You're trying to find your adulthood. You're trying to find who your friends are, and sometimes that kind of overshadows and even while you parent or while you're trying to be the best parent that you can. And uh, I think for me, I, I wish I would have had gone back to spend more time investing seeds at that beginning, mm -hmm. like planting seeds. Uh, personally, for me, um, but uh, I think for for us, as what we've seen is. Uh, just being faithful and just knowing that God has you through it all. I, I don't think I believed that when I was in my 20s. I, I think I needed to have it all figured out, and I didn't. So then I would panic in the moment, and yeah, I would yeah. react in anger or frustration with my kids, as opposed to uh, now I feel I don't overreact. I feel that I, we respond as opposed to react. Yep. And in my 20s, I just reacted. Uh, I feel like definitely just was like, the, the sky is falling. Yeah. What are we going to do? Um, as opposed to now, I don't feel as if the sky is falling. Um, uh, we approach it much different. And so I think that's the difference for me. I wish I would have told myself, when the sky is falling, don't panic. Yeah. I think that if I can go back and tell myself, that's what I'll go back and tell like, myself. Like, calm down. It's okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so. 
That's good. That's really good. I'm like mentally taking notes as you're saying, because like I like we're entering in we're we're a little farther behind. I mean, age wise, we're not, mm-hmm. but you guys look well younger than us somehow. But <laughs> yes. but we've got a lot to learn from the journey that you've taken because yeah. we're just now getting ready to launch our to first launch one. the first one. And like, what would you guys say to kind of leading up to that? Because you've been through kind of those those early teenage years. What would you say is has been the hardest thing with raising teenagers? I'll let you take a crack at that one. <laughs> the hardest thing. Um, I think like he said, uh, really just um, reacting and kind of allowing their emotions. We were kind of just along for the ride with them. Like when we're up, we're up. When we're d- one of them, who I shall not name, yes. w- would pretty much set the, the temperature for our household. Mm-hmm. And if that one was having a bad day, the house was having a bad day. Rather than grabbing control of the situation, regrounding ourselves, and not only helping that child out of it, but but then in turn helping the whole family. Yeah. Like this is just, it, it, God's always faithful. He always brought us out of those valleys that seem to be very low. Um, but when you're going through it, it just doesn't really seem that you can't get, you can't see the other side yet. Right. So, yeah, because sometimes yeah. the hindsight is truly 2020. Absolutely. You're like, mm-hmm. yeah. Why did I lose it so much and feel yes. like our life was over yeah. when really I, I couldn't see it? Because I feel like too, with that, you know, um, one thing, when I wrote my book, Peace Pirates, I actually did a survey with 200 different moms and I asked them, what's the hardest season of parenting? And what I found, and a lot of them had multiple kids. Mm-hmm. And what I found is the hardest season nearly, I would say like 95% of the time was the newest one for them. And so like what I hear you saying is when, when, especially with that first teenager, Mm -hmm. like when you're first experiencing this and they're first experiencing it, I think as parents, we tend to see it harder than it really is because Mm -hmm. we haven't been there yet. Sure. And I, and and we're certainly there. Like when Cooper got his license, our oldest son, um, we, I kind of freaked out a little, like those first two weeks, I was not well. Like I really, I really had to dig deep in my faith and like really surrender it to God. And I really talked to you, Keisha, like before we led up to this, because I just, I don't know, it kind of, it kind of hit me. Like, I guess I wasn't thinking about it and then it happened. And then I was almost like, oh my gosh. And I really, I didn't want to, I didn't want to make Cooper scared. You know, he's got to go drive this, this car, you know, and I want to, I wanted to instill confidence in him, but I also wanted him to have a healthy fear Mm -hmm. of what could happen should he not drive, you know, properly Mm -hmm. and be willy nilly about it. But you know, it is, it's one of those things where I do, I feel like as parents, when it's a new season for us, especially when they're in those teenage years, we do tend to want to freak out because some of these decisions they make as teenagers can affect them for life. The stakes are much higher. There's weight, Yeah, the stakes are much higher. I mean, did you feel that entering into to those teenage years with your kids? Yes. Absolutely, we did. Yeah. Um, and, and just from some of the decisions we had made in our younger years, we knew the implications of some of those decisions that could be made and and, yeah. and, and the pain that they can bring. So um, there was a lot of fear there. And again, yeah. it was just reminding ourselves and reminding them we have to be prayerful for that, through this and, and, and not allow that fear to... Um, kind of guide our parenting. And, and yeah. I'm so guilty of that. That's um, definitely my downfall is allowing fear, like worst yes. case scenario, like, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, they're going to drive off a bridge. We're yes. gonna, like all these horrible things you can imagine in your, in your head. And they just, they don't usually happen. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's easy I, to worry though. And I think that what she said there, where you parent out of your fears. So, you know, you're trying to protect them from maybe some of the mistakes that you made previously. And so we have three kids. Uh, I had uh, Brandon, who's our oldest, who's 25. I had him at 17 as a senior in high school. Yes. And so um, that brung, brought a new dynamic. So when we started dating, I, you know, hey, by the way, I have a two-year-old. Right. Uh, and so uh, you, you, you have to you have to figure that out as you become an instant family. Sure. Right. Uh, and, and so, but then you parent, you, they, I don't want that for our kiddos. I want them to, um, and I wasn't raised, uh, I didn't find Christ until I was in my twenties. Um, so uh, we want them though, to protect their, you know, their, their, their integrity. Uh, we want them to protect, uh, uh, we want them to go healthy into a marriage. Yes. And so you, you, you really try to overcompensate when you try to do anything and everything that you can do to prevent that from happening. 
And so uh, what we've learned is, is that you can and you can do a lot of things and put a lot of measures in place, but a lot of it is just faith. And a lot of it yeah, is preparing sure. them, right? Preparing their heart for it. Yes. And I think that's what we've learned uh, over the years is really uh, God has them. Uh, and, and, you know, I feel like the grandparents now at the table, are like, oh, God has you, uh, you yeah. know. Uh, but that's, you know, what we've truly seen is that is, is that even through the, the highest of highs or the lowest of lows, um, and even when we mess up, because I mean, all through these 21 years coming up on marriage uh, with these kids, I mean, we, we have missed the mark mm-hmm. countless times. Uh, but all our kids, <laughs> yeah, but our kiddos have been, they, they have turned out just fantastic. Uh, and you there, there are kids. some attention. There are, there are some things that, you know, I believe that we have some, some culture. There's things that are our culture that it's going to naturally produce. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the kids that we have, um, but those are things that God has told us and put on our heart to say, this is part of your, your family. And I want you to lead in a certain way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, just watching you guys and being your all's friends, what I notice is that you all, you know, faith is truly like the Lord is truly the foundation of your family. And I think you all have done such a great job of not only show, you know, giving that standard to your children, but living it out. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have that standard, but you all are so authentic to in living your faith. And I know that both of you, you know, youth group has mm-hmm. been a big part of kind of your family culture and what mm-hmm. you guys do and what you're involved in. Could you speak to that and like the difference that it's made in your kids' lives? You want to talk you want to with me? Well, I, I... The show may never end if we let you speak on this. <laughs> Go. Yeah, I, love students. I, I think it's, um, it, It's been invaluable. I mean, there were so many gaps that had to be filled in our parenting. Like we made so many mistakes, but having them in those youth groups consistently from the time they were able to be in them, they um, allowed for there to be other adults that we trusted that were pouring into these kids so that they could always say, and we could tell them, we're going to fail. We're going to mess up. God will not. And all of these adults that have been entrusted in these roles just reinforce that. And so there may be things they don't want to talk to us about. And, and yeah. we fully expected that. And But rather than going to a source that we may not trust, may not know what they're mm-hmm. going to be told, they were going back to these leaders or to these friends that they had made in their small groups. And, and we could just trust what we are saying um, is being reflected in in the advice they're getting from other people as well, because we're all just straight from the Bible. Our church is so big on we're straight from the Bible. Um, So that allowed us to have that confidence, like we're gonna make mistakes all the time. We still do constantly, Um, but he doesn't. And and he's there to fill in those gaps when we're uh, making so many mistakes. That's (laughs) so good. I I think just to add on, just to add on, is that the culture comes, we go to Keystone Church in Keller, Texas, uh, shout out to Brandon Susan. Amazing church. Uh, <laughs> is, uh, they, um, they have a culture of unity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have a culture of unity. And so that is part of our culture. And so we fight for unity inside the house, inside the home. And so they're hearing it at church with their small groups, with their small group leaders. Right. Uh, then they hear it from us. Um, and so we kind of always remember that we're, we're fighting for something bigger. We're fighting. And so no matter if we're disappointed that we didn't pay for that Chipotle meal or that if they're upset because we didn't extend curfew yeah. or upset that we didn't allow someone to spend the night that we're, we're not familiar with, um, we know that we're, it's okay. Uh, the next morning, we're going to go get some pancakes. We're going to be all right, that there's something bigger here at stake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so our kiddos have kind of realized that over the years. Yeah. Um, it is, but it isn't always in the moment. Oh, sure. It isn't always but in the moment. You guys have got so much relational equity just by you're, you're doing life with them. I mean, you're, you're up playing ultimate Frisbee with them and you're, you know, you're, you're just, you're always that, that presence makes such a, such sure. a difference. You guys have just really lived it and, and been there for your kids. And I, I'd like to pivot just a little bit um, to talk about the marriage aspect of things. Cause I know a lot of mm-hmm. folks listening, you know, they're, they're interested in like, yeah, I need all the help I can get. And like, how do we create that culture and how do we, how do we raise teenagers and how do we navigate all that? Um, and we could talk about that forever, but I, I'd, I'd love to make sure we talk some just about how you've, how you've prioritized marriage in this season as, and how that looks different than it did maybe in other seasons. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and what are you hoping for the next season when you've, you know, soon will be empty nesters that, you know, what do you That's want crazy. that to look like? I, I know. I know. <laughs> so yeah. What is, what does that look like right now? Just give us a little glimpse into, into married life. Yeah. Mm. T 
teenagers <laughs> marriage, they, they, they are a lot savvier than when they're nine and uh-huh. 10. They know how to play the, I'll ask mom for this or ask dad oh, for yeah. that. Oh, definitely. I will. Um, <laughs> dad's a little bit more lenient here. Um, mom's more understanding here. And I wasn't, I wasn't uh, prepared for that. And so uh, it happened. And I, I, because I wasn't prepared for it, what ended up happening was, uh, what had happened was, um, <laughs> was we ended up getting divided between, yeah. and you know, our kiddos are, are fantastic, mm-hmm. but just the enemy is trying to find ways to find ways to separate you. Oh, yeah. And so, um, and I would say, you know, as you go through it in the moment, um, you don't recognize it. I know for me, my, my biggest fault was probably trying to be a friend with my kids, you know, and, um, and, but you're given an authority over them to lead them and to yeah. shepherd them. Um, well, sometimes I was willing to throw that away to make sure that, Hey, are we going to sleep, you know, with a p- uh, peace in the house? Sure. Um, and so then we, maybe if we had a difference of opinion on that, um, and then that would turn into something much different. So I, I've had nights and I'm being, Oh, vulnerable here I, where we have a two story where I'm walking up and I will stop on the on the stairs and think, OK, am I giving up my authority in this moment is I'm fighting for, of course, peace and unity in my family. But at the same time, is it OK to let this rest and let them just wrestle with you, God, and not me just come in there and rescue, be the cool dad and the dad, this, you know, and so but that puts a stress on us. And that took a long time for me to learn to get there. And so I would say. Marriage for us was uh, teenagers create this, uh, they, and they love to poke and find it. Uh, they would find those ways to try to get us to kind of like be separate. And not until just recently uh, that I feel like we're finally getting on the same page. Yeah. And so uh, on that one. So I have a hot take. Mm-hmm. Marriage and teenagers are not compatible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, God. <laughs> but God. But with God. Yeah. It, everything he said. Yeah. It's, it's intense. Yeah. You forget you're, you're fighting the same battle Yeah, for, with, for the same wins, same team. It, uh, the devil sneaks in there quick. Right. Mm-hmm. But it, it, kind of what I hear you all saying, the key is hashing through that yes. and, and, and slowing down enough to say, wait a minute, we're literally wanting the same thing here. We maybe have two different ways of getting there, but ultimately our goals are the same. How can we do this together? <laughs> And, and that takes time. And I think we're, you know, you do see a lot of couples in the midst of raising teenagers really, you know, contemplating divorce or, mm-hmm. or really just living separate lives. Like maybe they haven't mentioned that, hopefully not, but like they're still living separate lives. And I do think because it's harder to hash it out mm-hmm. because it's really awkward at first. And it can even be, you know, it can get, I don't know, heated in the sense of feeling so so passionately about how you think the kids should be raised or what, how mm-hmm. we should handle certain yeah. situation. And the other one, like, no, 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 you know, and, but, you know, I feel like, like you said, Keisha, when we do choose to talk about these things and really pray through these mm-hmm. things and ultimately say, you know what, I'm going to pray about this. I'm truly giving it to God. Like he does meet you there. Mm-hmm. You know, he does meet you there yeah. every mm-hmm. time, he but does. I think we have to, it's pride. Pride is the thing that, that Satan loves mm-hmm. to use. He yeah. wants to make us think, our spouse doesn't understand us, that we're the better parent, yes. that we know best and like just to get in between us. But we have to fight against that. Yeah. And it just takes that intentionality of what you're talking about, Eric, and and saying, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to give up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep doing this and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have authority over my children and I'm going to talk to my spouse. But like you said, it's so hard sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's just, and we're just tired. Don't you feel like sometimes we just get tired? Yeah. I'm tired right now. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it, it brings out your insecurities too. And, and that all starts to, especially this phase of life where they are starting to leave the nest and you start to go back through these, what's next? Who am I? What? Yes. I, I've been a stay-at-home mom for 19 years now. Um, what does that next phase of life look like? And so when you're parenting through those moments, um, all of those insecurities start seeping in. And then so you're parenting out of not only this disagreement you just had together, but this inadequacy you feel. And it just ends up with a huge mess if you're not really walking with the Lord and, and reading the Bible and going back to those scriptures um, yes. just to get that grounding back. Absolutely. Yeah. Grounding is a good word. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's I'm, one of life's biggest transitions is, you know, you've given your life to raise these kids and then all of a sudden they're, they're, they're finally leaving the nest and you're always, of course, going to have a relationship with them, always be their parent. But that, 
that relationship changes dramatically. I'm sure mm-hmm. when they leave kind of under your, under your roof and are out spreading their wings and then trying to figure out, okay, now what does it look like for us as a couple in this season and, mm-hmm. and as individuals in this season? And yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's good stuff. What I could see, I could see how the, when people get to empty nesty, empty nesting season, how, if you're not aware of it, you can grow away mm-hmm. from each other as you get towards that season. Sure. Um, because everything that your past 18, 19, 20 years has been, has been about one purpose and then the purpose is gone. Right. And so, um, you know, I, there's a, a great book, uh, Kid CEO, Ed, Ed Young put out a long time ago and uh, I'm reading it and say, I'm gonna follow it to the T and then not. And then you get to the moments and you don't do it. But it's such a good resource because it, 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 it talks about that, well, yes, we're mom and dad, no, we're, we're, we're husband and wife first. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. in protecting that, the integrity of that uh, union. Um, and so that's something that we fight hard today so that we don't get caught by it in two years from now. Right. And, you know, all of our kids are, you know, they have their house or college and then it's just the two of us and we're looking at each other like, OK, now what's next? Yeah. And so we're excited for that next season. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we're we're so thankful to have friends here uh, that, of course, uh, you know, you, I, I've heard you talk about it, Dave and uh, Ashley on previous podcasts about like, you know, your, your friends and your couples with Brent and Stephanie. And uh, I think what's neat about that is we tell our kids all the time, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, show me your friends, oh, yeah. so your yes. future. And um, so we're constantly surrounding ourselves with couples that are like minded. They're going to be prayerful with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, glass half full, you know, not empty. Mm-hmm. Positivity is huge for me. Uh, if someone's negative, it's I, I, I'm deuces, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so uh, that's something that I don't stick around for. And so we have great friends that encourage us. So we, while yes, it's been tough, it's been challenging. We have great friends that have really helped us along the way. And it's good when you're you have those friends who are in the season with you, but also but beyond that season. Oh yeah. I know you guys have both, mm-hmm. and and even you know pouring into people who are behind you a little mm-hmm. bit and are wanting to learn from you, like us. You know, as far as it goes with parenting, I want to ask you this really important question because I know people watching and listening to this are like, you know, all of this is fine and good, but what about those teens that are so rebellious and are causing friction in your family because of the decisions the teens have made? And I know in the work that you do with youth and, 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 you know, just living life, you guys have probably seen this happen. Mm -hmm. And I would love to hear kind of your advice to the parents who are, you know, they're Christian parents, but for whatever reason, their child's just really wayward right now. And they feel like this is the one thing that no matter what they do, they want to make their marriage, you know, put their marriage first, but they feel like this is crisis mode and this kid is just, you know, wreaking havoc and and they don't know what to do with that. What would you say? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, it's hard. And we get a lot of questions about this because it's a hard situation. There's no like easy fix. I wish there was, I wish there was, here's these three steps, you know, but I know that there's some, some insight. You want to take a step first? You want me to go first? I'm still thinking. Sure thing. I'll let you think. I think what comes to mind first is I, we have, I would say that one of our kiddos, he's never going to watch this because I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> uh, so, but one of our kiddos, he's, he has a rebellion. Like he, like he likes to push the boundaries. He mm-hmm. likes to push the boundaries. Uh, he's independent. Yeah. Uh, and so all of these things that you see when they're younger, like they're fierce, they're independent. They have a confidence about them. When they're a teenager, the enemy likes to counterfeit it all. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And, and so we, we've seen that rebellious shriek in them. Mm-hmm. Now he does it in a, in a, uh, in a, uh, it's not a detrimental to his future mm-hmm. way kind of way, but it's enough to make me want to beat the wall. <laughs> it's enough to make me want yeah. to just like, are you kidding me? You know, better than this. Why are you acting this way? Your heart is better than this. You know, I've seen it. Um, but I, I think for me it, it's just patience that, that I think of patience and I think of fruit of the spirit, yeah. like what, 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 what is, what should I show to him? Um, and I, I believe right now where we've seen with, with him as he goes away to college and as he, as he's there is that, man, I didn't take me to write him. It didn't take me to write him. It, it, all I can do is try to show him and tell him what I believe God has for him. Yeah. And surround him in a good area. We prov- and he has a, a loving family that's always going to love him regardless. And he has completely gone to uh, college his first six or a couple months um, and just thrived. That's and, great. you know, so and so I, I would say to that parent, you know, um, you may not see it, 
but we we have seen the the fruit maybe not the harvest didn't happen immediately like it took a lot of water we're pouring water we're, we're miracle grow everything we can get to get that harvest uh and we didn't see it until we got out of the house mm-hmm. yeah like it really like when he when he got out of the house and i think that there was and maybe because we we're helicopter parents uh maybe we didn't uh, maybe we were his ceiling uh maybe we were that uh and when we got out of the way he was able to to flourish, mm-hmm. uh, and, and I think that would be something is just say, maybe say a prayer like, "Am I am I the lid?" Uh, you know, yeah. and then yeah. give give God a little bit more opportunity to work with them. But that I love that you said that because I've I've had that a little bit like in certain areas with Cooper, our oldest. I I am not I would not call myself a helicopter mom, but there's certain times when that will. F- all of a sudden there it is, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I'm like hovering and I'm, and I do feel like the Lord pierced in my heart. Like what you're saying, like, don't be a lid, mm-hmm. don't be a lid. And you know, I know there's different, um, I'm going to ask you a question just a minute about this, but there's different, uh, pages that we follow on Instagram, like grown and flown yeah. where it's reminded us guys, if you're not following at grown and flown on Instagram, you're missing out. Great advice. There's also never empty nest is another one I follow on Instagram. But, um, I remember, you know, it kind of puts stuff out there because it is so easy to just, want to, you know, hold them even tighter. Mm-hmm. And then that's when they just want to like, they're like, let me go. And then maybe don't make the best decisions. And I've had to remind myself of that too. And I want you, Keisha, to describe you, you helped me so much. We we're talking about that time before our kids launch, <laughs> how they do what to the nest because soiling it, the nest, soiling the nest. Can you describe that for Goodness. our listeners? I love so that. So that was from grown and flown. Um, and it was basically the concept that as they get ready to leave for college, <clears throat> <laughs> they really just are, are trying to make their own way. And for ours, for our son, um, he, he was already very independent. He felt he had all the tools and, and I guess we're seeing he, he really did. But to me, um, him trying to, uh, assert his independence was just, um, like making a mess of the house, not an actual mess, right. like a, an emotional mess of the house. Like, mm-hmm. why are you controlling me? Why? Um, it, it feels like the closer I get to college, the more you're trying to pull back. And I didn't feel like I was. I think that was just really his, his wings were just ready to go. Right. Um, and, and we were still just trying to make sure that the, the groundwork was there, mm-hmm. that the foundation was laid. And it was. But just allowing that to... Um, to happen before he actually left was was tough. Just letting go of those things, like and, and knowing where to let go. I don't believe you should fully. Okay, you're going to college. We're hands off. You do what you want to do. That right. that still doesn't seem like the right answer to me. I think there was somewhere in between that that we could have landed on. But um, the soiling the nest, it, it's a good thing because then you're ready. <laughs> you're ready for them to leave the nest and yeah. go spread those wings and fly. And, and and like he said, he is doing a phenomenal job in college. And and the groundwork was laid and the foundation yes. was there. And he's 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 amazing. And it's so I know as parents that brings you so much peace. But I think every parent, if we're all being honest, we all have that what if. Oh, mm-hmm. like absolutely. Have, have we taught him all the things. You know, always. Like, does he have that foundation in the Lord? Because, you know, gosh, in our culture these days, you just see you see teenagers, you know, especially older teenagers leaving the faith and just like going yes. to college and literally abandoning their faith. Yeah. And I know, um, you know, this like that that's that's something that I mean, as Christian parents, it, that would be devastating. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. we want to make sure that they are firm in their in their faith in the Lord and uh, and not just going, you know, I mean. I can't imagine being in this world without having a foundation of faith. And so it is, but it does take your breath away a little bit thinking like, Lord, like you're just, you truly are. It's like, you're like little bird fly and you're like, Lord, please like be there the whole way, surround them by the right friends, give them the right opportunities to grow in you and to not grow farther away from you. And, you know, I, did you kind of feel that in that launching time? Was it, absolutely? even though, you know, you have taught them all these things, but that little bit of like, Oh yeah, definitely. And the other thing is they're going to have friends who, they may have the same values as you. I'm not saying they don't have the same values, but they may have different rules at their home. True. They may yeah. be able to do a lot of things you may not allow or vice versa. Right. So having the, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hey, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> having the, the courage to stand on what you yes, set yes. in place mm-hmm. um, and what you fit. And you can always go back and pray, you know, maybe we need to ease up here. Maybe we need to push more here, but whatever you do land on, having the courage to stand on that. And I don't care what your friend's doing. This yes. is this is what our home is doing. Um, yeah. 
That's a big mm. thing. Because that and teenagers, don't you feel like, and David and I have seen this, where it's like, but they do it this way. Yes. Or, Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. constant. Or it's everybody's constant. doing this, Mom. Or yeah, it started with social media. Well, they <laughs> yes. got it, and like, we're not doing that yet. No, I know. And then it went on to curfew, and then it went on to, Just you everything. know, places in the, you know, we don't want you hanging out in downtown Dallas, you know, at 1 a.m. on a Saturday. Uh, yeah. and, and so it, it turns into just more and more. And. I mean, there's physical protection, but then there's the spiritual side of it. And that's, you know, you're, you're praying for both and you're trying to prepare them for both of it. And so uh, I would just say to that parent, stay patient in it. Yeah. You know, it's a process. It is a process. Raising, shepherding and raising a child is a process. And we're seeing it firsthand. That, uh, and it doesn't mean you don't get anxious or you don't have those those nights. But um, for us, we... Uh, we're getting to the end of it, like the end of the tunnel is coming, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, but it just starts a new season. Yeah. And then we're walking them through. We like we have our oldest who's already married. And so, you know, and, you know, we're, we're, we're walking through newlywed, you know, uh, you know, seasons. And so it, it's 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 fun. It, it's all exciting and fun. And I still can't believe that we're in our 40s and we're, we're in this season because <laughs> yeah. I still feel like a kid at heart. Uh, but it's really a lot of fun. And God's been so good. So much favor on us. And you guys are an amazing yeah. family and it's just, it's, it's amazing to see your kids flying and mm-hmm. using that foundation you've given them to soar. I know guys got big plans for each of them. I know this, this talk has been an encouragement to all who've heard it. You guys have taught us so much just as, uh, as you're sharing these principles that, that can help the marriage and parenting journey of anybody with, with kids that age. And as you enter into this next season and you got the house to yourselves, I pray you have more naked time than ever. He, he I pray naked, naked that, season. that it's yes. just full of love and laughter. Lift and, glass to that. Yes. Yeah. Lift glass. Cheers to that. <laughs> Cheers to, to naked time. Cheers to the naked season. And yes. For all you guys who've been watching and listening, thank you so much for tuning in. And we appreciate you so much. If you know somebody who ha- is the parent of a teenager right now, um, share this with them. Just text them the link or, or tag them on social media and say, hey, listen to this. I think this would really, really encourage you. Uh, and, and it will because the, the wisdom you just heard from the Gomez's uh, could really make a big difference in the life of somebody who's in that season right now. And we appreciate all of you. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you again to our dear friends, yes, Eric and Keisha. Absolutely. Thank it's you. an honor. We'll see you guys next time.